I saw something on the side of the road and I thought, is this a group of animals? What is this? Is this goats? Is this sheep? And then I saw the teeth and I thought, oh shit. And I could literally just still hear my saying, no, 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 because I saw the teeth moving. And I let there without consciousness for about an hour. After waking up, yeah, they just let there contemplating life. Let's have a little go and see how this goes. It's cozy, I like it. It's just so beautiful. Like, this is perfect. Like, sort of, <laughs> so, shall we just, it. should I just hire my flat for porn productions in the future? Yeah, that would be fantastic. <laughs> can you, rolling with CS, you, can you just introduce yourself? Tell us your name. And... So, my name is Annabelle Lorenz. I'm 41 years old. I used to own a nose. Unfortunately, I left it in Navarra. Do you think anyone will understand your sarcasm? No, never. This is why I can't, I can't show it very often. Ruby gets it. So you're not that fucked up, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first one to laugh about myself, so I, I, I just think you have to just share up a bit. Why do you think you have to laugh about things? If you don't laugh, you cry. Before my crash, I had worked two years really intensely on my cycling. I felt great psychologically, so I went for it. I decided I want to do trans If you're logical or rational, you, you don't do ultra events. They make more sense. There's no prize money, so why do you do this? For me, it's uh, the pleasure. For this race, it didn't go quite to the plan that initially was made. It didn't last very long. It was only there five hours. I had chosen to avoid the city, to avoid an accident. But accidents can happen anywhere. I was descending quite happily, just enjoying the night, and I thought, well, this is not too bad. And after that, I've got no recollection whatsoever. I was really lucky, I had this just done before the accident. I had a face on. <laughs> that was me before the accident. I once upon a time had a face. That looked all right. Bit strange that it's gone. I didn't really realize when I had it.
before my crash, I had moved to Spain with my daughter, Ruby. I had two jobs and I was working really long hours. Egg, I need your help. And uh, I found a flat here which was matching our, our price that we could pay. And it happened to be a one bedroom. And I thought, well, a one bedroom is better than on the street. Get out of the blanket. It's a white blanket. Don't drag it around the house. Take off. Put some clothes on like a normal I've human being. Clothes. You're wearing a blanket. Take the blanket off and put some pants on for the first Why time today. You? You're blind. She resented me quite a bit for asking her to move. She was a teenager. It wasn't the best time. It was a bit last minute to still get her through school um, without losing too much time learning language and so on. Every now and then we've got a cycling station, usually during five o'clock in the morning or earlier. Or even later, until 12 o'clock at night. And you don't get to sleep. Have you been on there all night? <laughs> I don't really have a social life. I have to be very economic with my time. And um, I have to be, as I'm also full-time working, really careful that I don't waste and lose time and energy that I then can't train because of that training. Before my crash, I was the fittest I've ever been. Triple Everesting, can you explain what that is and why you did it? Well, I'm, I don't weigh anything and that, that helps. And if you don't weigh much and you've got a certain type of physique, you're more, everyone has got different specialities, so I'm a climber. I like climbing. I first did a half Everest thing, then a full, and then I heard about double Everest thing. I thought, has anyone ever done a triple? So the hill, yeah, it starts at my uh, home village in Mionio. It's two and a half kilometers long, and it's got a height of about 100 meters. You literally don't stop. I think it was slightly over 50 hours, 51 hours or 52 and I just kept riding up and down the same hill. So you're the first woman to ever do that? Um, yeah, the first woman ever being stupid enough to spend that long on a climb. I should have felt tired and bad after this, but I was recovered within a week. It felt like within a week I'd never done it. Physically, I was the fittest I've ever been. For a person that hasn't met my mama, I tell them that she's very stubborn. She likes to have her way and if she wants to do something, she'll try to do it. I don't know, she's quite easy to like when you first meet her. She's very talkative. When she's had coffee, she won't stop talking. And it's very annoying. Quite sensitive to coffee. In fact, Ruby doesn't allow me to drink coffee because I get too hyper, even when this caffeinated. My favourite cup. It's really nice china. Ruby gave it to me. <laughs> Ruby? What? Why did you get me that mug? <laughs> because I was young and didn't know what you like. So it's not valid anymore, no? No, it's a bit wrong. The only thing valid about you is a salad drawing. A salad drawing. That's what I used to be. That's what I'm now, what she said. <laughs> okay. Obviously sometimes we fight and we don't fight like normal mothers or daughters but I think that's just us and our personalities. I do describe it as like usually a normal mother and daughter relationship but it's not a love language I'd say. <laughs> so yeah. What was the worst thing about seeing your mum in the hospital or the thing that upset you the most? It wasn't really a thing, I don't know, she was, it was seeing her without her personality she was always crying and like getting very frustrated with herself. She wanted to force herself to walk again. And she kept on believing she could just start walking the next day if she was a bit stronger. But if she really can't go back on the bike, then she'll probably be very depressed.
The race started at 9 p.m. Most riders planned to ride through the night. It was uh, about four o'clock in the morning. I met a young Spanish uh, cyclist and we were cycling up a hill and on the top there was a roundabout and he had a different route than I did. And uh, so we discussed and we decided pretty much to go uh, my way. Halfway on the downhill, I saw from the distance a red blinking bicycle light. And then I saw uh, Anna laying behind the bicycle uh, in the middle of the road. I think what happened is I had an impact with an animal. And I let there without consciousness for about an hour. I woke up and <laughs> I was trying to find my phone, trying to contact someone, but I couldn't move my entire lower body. All my strengths, all the strengths that I ever had in my entire life, more than giving birth, more than winning a race, more than anything, all my strengths, I put, I thought I'd have to move that leg. If I can't move that leg, now I'm paralyzed. And it didn't move. I, I sort of started to give up a bit. I closed my eyes and it felt like maybe just five or 10 minutes. It didn't feel long at all. I could see these two lights coming towards me and I thought, I can't believe this. There was uh, blood uh, floating a bit down the road. Her face was uh, all over with uh, blood. I, seriously? The serious thing is, I, I, I thought she's dead when I saw her. Trying not to be emotional. I think it's, it's lucky, it's fortunate that it was you. I think everyone would have stopped. Everyone would have helped her. It was a nice circumstance that I'm, I'm, I'm full qualified paramedic. Uh, she was in a life-threatening situation and I'm lucky that we found her at that moment. I love the way it says M for male. It's mujer, but I, it's, to me it's male. Don't stumble over my pee bag, okay? That would be disastrous. <laughs> that time since I crashed is a weekend three days ago. It was on a Saturday. We had another Saturday, and so it's one week and three days, I think. I sustained Injuries to my face, to my nose, to my mandible. I lost two front teeth. I've got various stitches in my mouth. My cervical spine is cracked in the three, four, and three, three, four, um, three. And I've got a hematoma on my medulla, whatever that is. I suppose it's my spinal cord somewhere. It's got some damage, so I cannot move myself. But I've got movements in my hand, and they're mostly straight now. And I've got movements in my arm. And how are you mentally? I, am, I think I think I get up from tomorrow, maybe, and just get up again. So I'm all right because I don't think that I can't. It's not that bad. It doesn't seem that bad. And I've been told that my injuries could have been worse, so it doesn't seem that bad. I was lucky and I was lucky also the way I've been found. I, I try to focus on those things. The first 24 hours were not funny at all because I could not eat. I was so messed up, my entire face was so messed up. I had no idea how bad the damage was, but I didn't care about my face. I just thought, what's going to happen with my legs? And um, they did the test and they said, well, it looks like it's a stable fracture. 
and uh, you just got a massive hematoma in your spinal cord, which we're going to try down and see how much damage the, that has done to your nerves. They don't want to make me any false hope. And I just think, okay, it would be amazing if the body would function again as a normal honor. And I observe and wait for it. And every time when it gives me a little hint, as in today, the hands, I can move those three fingers. The other hand is almost the same. It's a bit weaker. But I can do things with my hands. And I hope that there's going to be loads of tiny little ones that keep coming like this that show me that it's still alive, the body, or that it wants to be alive again. One of the nurses came in and I said, come on, just tell me what you think. Have you got any idea how this is going to evolve? Because I don't. She said, I don't know either. We don't know those things. No one knows. Spinal injuries, they're really individual. You can't say anything. But I tell you one thing, and that's the only thing you need to do to know right now. Your spinal cord is not cut. You don't need to know about anything else. That's just, just let that sink in. It's not cut. And you know what that means. You've got a chance. This was the ride that I discovered as one of the first routes I did when I arrived here. But I, I came up here and suddenly, one of the corners, I saw a waterfall. It was incredible. That's the way you train in Spain, isn't it? The good winter training. It was here, actually, when I decided to start to think, okay, whatever it takes, I need to come here, this is home. I don't class myself as an athlete, I just, I'm an adventurer, and this is not talent, this is years and years of developing through being outdoors, through constantly using my body, being able to get up early mornings for something that you're really passionate about. A big fear after the accident um, definitely was never not to cycle again. I, you know, I'm strong, but I'm I'm also weak. This was my my strength. That's my release, and it's it's not just like oh I can't ride my bike again. It's like I lost my freedom. You don't really know what you want. You're not gonna make it. I am lucky to know exactly what I want. What is it you want? Just cycle. <laughs> The one thing that always got me in a shit place there was and after my races is when I had another focus on another goal. And I thought when I woke up from this, I, I thought for a day maybe I, there is no other focus. What focus is there going to be? But I can move my legs and feet a bit. I can even pedal along. But they move. If someone else tells me oh, you can't do something, I, I say thank you for your opinion. And I say quietly to myself, but I disagree. <laughs> they only did this since 24 hours that I can do this. <sighs> the leg movements has improved and the hand movement has improved. I can now eat myself almost. This was an accident. It was an accident. It's like if you've got a car accident, you're not going to say, I'm never going to drive in the car again. You still have to go to work. And even though that's not my work, it's my life. So I'm not going to say, oh yeah, I'm going to stop cycling now. I never scratched a race, I never not completed a race. If I can survive this, then I can, I can do it. Before I had it in the back of my head, and now I can, I want to do it, I really want to do it. I've decided. I'm going to do trans again.
I learned over the years that if you throw the bar really, really high, the more likely you are that it might happen. I, everything I do, I always throw the bar, bar super high, and usually I end up a few meters ahead of it. I think, crazily, didn't really have any complete breakdown after the accident. I never got up, looked at my face and crumbled. I never really sobbed over the fact that I couldn't move. But when I picked my bike up, I uh, it was like a punch in the face. And um, it was just to see the damage on my dream. So yeah, the things that you love most probably also are the things that will hurt you the most, intentionally or unintentionally. Where is that bike now? Underneath me. See, I fixed the fork. It wasn't that broke. Only broke its neck like me. So, so you're, you're up to what? 70%, 80%? 50. You s okay. Yes. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. Ruby gave this to me on Christmas. It's my security blanket. The first time I was sat again on the turbo trainer was in November, and I could hardly lift my leg over the, over the saddle. The physiotherapist, uh, two weeks later, he said to me, he walked like a, like a doll on strings. And you're telling me that he's just ridden a bicycle. You're having me on. <laughs> I can't run. I used to just, when I was a bit late, I would just run. And my running now is not great. I move quite strangely, but handsome is what handsome does, eh? <laughs> Las piernas, ¿qué tal? Bueno. ¿Cómo vas? No, está bien. Perfecto. Porque empieza mañana. Gracias. So they're trying to stimulate the muscle in the in the leg. I don't know too much about it. It's just like it's a electric cycle. First it does this, and then it does a bit of cramping. I quite like sitting still and hanging out. If I've done everything that I had to do, which is kind of never. <laughs> I was born with hip dysplasia, which meant that every time I would be very active, like for example running with my friends, I would then have to spend the entire night in pain. I said to my mom about it and she eventually took me to a doctor and we found out that my hip place meant the way it was fitting with the femur with the hip socket wasn't right at all. And they said, well, we have to bone graft you, we have to repair this and this needs some serious operation or you start swimming or horse riding. This is how I started horse riding, because I had this issue, and it took six months of horse riding to strengthen up all the ligaments. My mother kept telling me, look at your strong legs. You've got really strong legs. Obviously, the pain and the nights lying down, putting creams on there, rubbing ibuprofen cream or whatever it was on, onto that area, that, was, that is a very big memory. Um, the second one, we all, at the end of kindergarten, went on a bicycle trip and everyone, I mean everyone, went to the end to a massive picnic and they had to, they had to pull me out of the two kilometers. <laughs> Turn this up for a minute. Okay. I was shit. Well, these sounds like these are painful memories. Well, <laughs> never stopped, has it? I've got nerve damage all along my legs, my feet, my fingers. Everything is super sensitive. At the same time, numb, which is weird. The operations that are still coming up are for dental treatment because my jaw is collapsed at the top. The facial operations that will come up at the end of this year I've got no idea if they really 100% can do much with that, if it will go right, because obviously it's quite a delicate area that helps your breathing. And aesthetically, I mean, even though I'm not a vain person, it's quite nice to have a face. 
a face that when you talk to someone that you know it's not weird. Anna, what's it like for you coming out in public these days? It's fine until I start to talk to someone, um, especially people that I haven't met before, but also people that I've met before, because after about, um, you haven't actually done it yet, but um, a lot of people after about five minutes start doing this. They don't even realize I don't think, but I, I can't quite tell you why I want. It's, I, I don't look at myself, I don't miss this part anymore that much because I'm getting used to it, but it's, you don't see yourself, so you don't, you don't um, conceive, perceive yourself like this, but you can tell that other people are disturbed, you know, in some kind of way, even if they don't want to. It sucks. You can feel how tough that must be. Sorry, it's just a bit shit. I've got enough things to do without that. I had always before and I still got this and that on top of it now. It's like carrying another child and the child is you. I don't really have much of a problem with expression emotions, but sometimes I cry when I go up the mountains. We can, you know, there's no one there. There's no one to judge you. It doesn't matter what face you've got, how bad you smell, how much or how little you talk. So, yeah, you can express yourself as much as you want until you're as quiet as your surrounding. Usually by the time I get back from the ride, I'm completely quiet. My mum, once she said to me, I've got four children. So she was telling everyone about our gifts and she said, about my brother and about my sister and this and that. And she said, and you, what's going to happen with you? One day you're going to be really, really free. Freedom, freedom is the greatest gift. I just want to be like known as a person that, that found to be free again. In total, I think it took us eight hours to get here because I had to stop twice um, because I just had to get out of the car. It, it hurts not to move. It wasn't so good. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Pero estás aquí, no? Sí, sí. Sí, sí. Nos vemos en el coche. Es en ese. The drive down here yeah, was about 600 kilometers. What I'm riding here tomorrow is going to be the same distance. This feels really good. It feels like home. <laughs> I didn't think I would make it. Last year, I came here with Ruby as a support and we did the, this race together. And I ended up winning it. Um, this year I've got back on a slightly different um, circumstances is going to be my first attempt to actually try to race again and put a bit of an effort in. So um, tomorrow is a big day. I'm going to start racing at 11 o'clock and I'm not going to finish until 11 o'clock the next day. Um, I'm Anna Orens, uh, solo femenino. Solo femenino? I'm also here, you know. Ah, and my hija. I have to come first here. The price she pays for this, having her mom being a bit weird and being always out and having to cope with me when I'm in full training is, is hard, you know, that's really hard. And when I'm out there and fighting, I'm not just fighting for me, I also fight because she sits by the side and I know that it will feel worthwhile if I do well, so it's an obligation. I have to come first. I brought my home office so I can work from here in the morning. Obsession and passion for me is very close together. I think for me, maybe obsession is taking passion a bit further and trying to expand yourself with it. Passion is to 
get pleasure out of something. I get pleasure as well, but I also get a lot of stick and I don't mind that stick because I actually realize that, for example, yeah, tomorrow I might get completely wiped out. I might have horrible moments or I might realize that I haven't got it anymore, but I will take it 10,000 times better than the Annabelle from last year. If I would have got here last year and been wiped out, it would have destroyed me. And now I'm at a point where through my obsession with bikes and with riding, I learned you can get really hit, but you will always get back up and you will always find out a way to get better again somehow. So are you saying some good has come out of this crash? Yeah, I think I needed it. I think I needed it. And I guess for someone like me who worries that this could kill you, what would you say to someone who worried about you? Let's put it this way. You can take it away from me and kill me inside and let me stay in a living body for the rest of my life and torture me. Or you can leave it with me and maybe kill my outside, but I will be happy inside and that, that's not going to change. I like this bit. <laughs> egg! Egg! No, she wouldn't like it. Personally, the first eight hours were tough because you start in the middle of the day. It's not nice. The asphalt reflects the heat. That was tough last year, and as soon as the sun went down, I was quite happy flying around here in the evening. Last year, I had a lot of people saying, like, oh my gosh, your mum's a beast, after seeing her going through the night. Because lots of people had to stop and rest and everything, but she was just going faster and faster during the night. If I just last the 12 hours, I'm still happy. But ideally, to make me really happy, I want to go out here and be dead, what having given everything and went over the mark from last year. So you really think you can beat what you did last year? I always think things because I'm crazy. This is why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. I normalize the stuff that's not quite normal. The amount of times I've been called crazy or completely mad, I can't count. 24 hours are never easy because if you're not completely spent by the end of it, you've not done it properly. You've got to be crazy. <laughs> but people often say, how can you do this? And I say to them, well, you could probably do this yourself, but do you want it? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> It's not, it's not that um, pleasant riding through a night. I actually enjoy that. It seems like she's struggling a bit more than last year. She's coming three-ish times. I missed your lovingly made sandwiches. Oh. I think she's okay. Since the accident, my body is roadkill. Is that the biggest stop you're going to take? 
I mean, that's not a long stop. That is a long stop. Other people are sleeping and stuff. You won't know. No, I can't because I'm fucking sleep. My body isn't like it used to be. I actually didn't survive that crash. It's just that the mind didn't want to give up. There's lots of things harder in life than bike racing. I fought in the first Gulf War. I wrote letters home to be opened if I didn't come back. There's far harder things in life than bike racing. It's all about mental attitude, and positive mental attitude. It's quite hard to take, because last year I did like 100 kilometers more by that time. It's not so nice, but it's just the way it is. I had four months of training, and in between that I had COVID. Numerous colds, messed up, muscle. You've been cycling for 21 hours since Yeah, very slowly. I don't know this body anymore. <laughs> does weird things. It does really strange things. I wake up in the morning and the entire thing is shut up. But every now and then, it surprises me. Watching her race, watching other people on the bike, I find it really cool, I don't know. There's about 45 more minutes left of the race, and I don't know what I should say. She's doing quite well. But, and do you feel proud when you see her do well? Yeah. Well, obviously she's my mum. It was a lot tougher than last year for me, and it was really tough to see how much I've lost. I knew that I have to come first here, and I set myself a ridiculous high goal to ride better than last year. With three, with three months training, it was not possible. At the very end, I set myself one goal. I wanted to finish the race completely. This is definitely lazy. I'm, I'm not a passionate cook. I, I try to keep things very simple on the cooking side. Obviously, I need to eat well, so it's a bit of a in-between. I mean, Ruby and me, we, we live a fairly basic life. We don't go on any extra well holidays. We save in clothes. And, I mean, even the, the house, the flat, obviously, still is a sacrifice. This is so awful. <laughs> I've got no time to do anything else, and the, the fridge is empty. Ruby and me empty it. After seven days, there's nothing left in it. So.
Yeah, do you want one? Yeah. Please. Ruby's got hobbies. She needs it because this wasn't that wasn't easy for her. It's, it's one thing if you willingly as an adult make a decision and you move country. It's another it's another thing if your mum says, This will be good for you in the end and you have to come now. It tastes like beetle shells, I don't know. This question. For her to be strong enough and find her footing here. And I'm happily keeping everything pretty basic. So she, I've got the cycling and, and she's got horse riding. I, I personally, I've got no desire to ride horses anymore whatsoever. I've done it for 20 years. But I think for a child and for a therapy purpose, they are fantastic. The pony is the only thing that will level her out because she's just got a wooden head just like Ruby and she's just as unreasonable at times <laughs> and, and um, yeah, they, they suit each other very well. Horses are great levelers. Oh, watch the wave. Good girl. Good girl. Go a bit deeper. The value of, for the psychologically uh, well-being of a human <laughs> It's incredible, they're magic. And it's, it's really good for her to have her pony friend to get her through the, the tough times that we had. She, um, after my accident, she, she didn't feel so well and she didn't really get out much anymore, but the pony got her soon out and they do a lot of stuff together now, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight the Transiberica 2022 starts again. Now I've got mixed feelings. I'm I'm nervous. I'm a little bit afraid of the upcoming uh, riding, sleeping problems. Kinda spins. <laughs> when I when I get to the briefing, I have to, you know, look the other way. When all the other riders come with their fancy, expensive, good-looking, clean bikes, and I'm just coming with this masterpiece. When I first got into this, I thought that the thing you needed to prepare was fitness. Couldn't have been more wrong. But it's psychology. Uh, it's overcoming adversity. It's the fact that stuff does go wrong. It's always weird stuff that you can't prep for. For me, it's still kind of unfinished business. Last year, it was horrible to, to give up to scratch. So. Yeah, I, I want to finish it. I've personally set a challenge to podium as a pair. Yes, we'd like to be on the podium in the pairs category, I think is what we're aiming for. And um, we're also hoping for first British pair. <laughs> um, we, think, we think we might have a realistic chance at that. It should be in yeah. for both of those, yeah. yeah. Talks through how many pairs are racing? Three. Three, yeah, <laughs> three pairs racing. And we're the How only many steps are there on the podium. <laughs> this week. We're the only British yeah, pair, think... aren't we? Seeing Anna again. Um, after the crash, uh, we stayed in contact. My plan B was to give you my truck as well and just wait here for the on the beach, you know? <laughs> now you can't do that because I might need you later. <laughs> you won't. Well, she's super stressed and probably being here at the start brings back all the memories, post-traumatic memories as well, so that's what I could imagine. I know my body very well. I, I know what I'm doing with my life, and uh, to even get here after what happened in the, in the past, I will finish this race. The 
first day you need to get into your rhythm. Like, can just cycle all night. You literally don't stop. The toughest thing is riding into the dark, into the unknown without knowing where you want to end up. At the same moment when the sun rises, um, it's quite a good feeling. Feel good? Woo! Hola, buenos dias. And the second day is usually a bit weird. I, I don't know where I go. I, I, I mean, it's, it's a weird zone. Maybe it's like meditation. You just completely empty your mind. You just focus on breathing and just riding. After the third day, you feel like you've never done anything else. Yesterday I stopped, I had done 530k and I think I got like 70k only since, what, 2 a.m. So there's many, many more to come. I tried not to think about it too much. I don't like pain, you know, and who does like pain? Some people might. I, I personally, I don't, I'm not into pain. Um, I like things to work really smoothly. I take great care that my equipment is so that it doesn't inflict any pain on me if I can avoid it, because I believe that if you're not in pain, you can go further for a lot longer. But it's also a lot of luck, um, I believe, you know, and sometimes you don't have the luck of the draw. When you do ultra endurance races and you're tired and you're exhausted and you want to get somewhere, don't, you don't make the smartest decisions. Anna, in a couple of days, if you could text us, if you're feeling more positive that we can be following, that would be great. Otherwise, I'll stay, I'll stay clear from you, okay? I'm really not like I used to be. I'm not working. And if you get in trouble, give us a shout, okay? No. Okay, well, good luck, all right? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh. oh, that's horrible. <clears throat> she said uh, <clears throat> she's not what she used to be, and uh, she doesn't want anyone to see it. He's tough. She's, I think she's second at the moment. Fanny's pulling ahead. Yeah, I guess we better crack on and um, try and make a film about her without being anywhere close by, which is proving quite difficult. I'm still not as fit as I was before. I just can't quite get there because I was ridiculously fit. I had done the triple Everest thing and then I was just cruising on that fitness towards the last Transiberica and I was ridiculously fit, but never mind. Can't change that. Are you enjoying this? Uh, the first 400 I was not, but now it's okay. It's getting better? Yeah. Yeah, I have to keep going, you know. You have to? Always. Always? Always keep going. Still, three, more than 3,000? No, less 2,500, something like that. Yeah. Suffering is so if you start feeling sorry for yourself, but you continue going. You just laugh the devil in the face and just say, yeah, <laughs> so what? And you just keep going. What happens after that is suffering. But you never suffer for long. It goes in waves and it comes and it goes and it comes and it goes and you can watch yourself. And um, it's always good to have a good sense of humor in those moments because uh, most of it is quite pathetic. Most of it is just in your mind. Just 
Anna is on good form. She's mentally quite strong. It's always interesting, I mean, a, a true reflection of what state you're actually in is when you walk into a fuel station at three o'clock at night. You seem to have got your spirits back. Yeah, well, because I'm racing now. I wasn't before. I'm at the halfway point now. And when you're at the halfway point, it's quite simple. You just say, okay, just the same again, and then you're done. You can grasp it then, and it's all right. I know one thing, I can do a lot better than I've done in the last few days. I was not with it, really. A, I really didn't want to come here because I knew I'm not ready for it. But I knew that the longer I hold it up, if I wait for another year, yeah, I would be then prepared, but it's going to hang over me for the rest of the year, and I don't want this. So it's 10 o'clock. Where are you off to now? The mountains. I want to climb to some mountains to go towards Guadalupe. I know how to pick myself back up. I'm so happy with my own company. I can go like this for weeks on the go. Anna is currently second. Fanny is 40 kilometers ahead of her, which is nothing. Um, so it seems like now this is all coming down to who sleeps the least and just got a message from Raphael, so let's see what he's up to. Hey Rufus, I'm just doing something very stupid. I have to, my plan, route planning or shit. I'm terrible exhausted. I have to carry my bike four to five hours on my shoulders, hiking bike across the Pyrenees from the Spanish to the French side. How stupid am I? But the view, isn't it good? I don't know if I should be sad or if I should be thankful for this experience. And now I'm doing those four or five hours hiking. So I'm just letting you know I do something very stupid. Hope you're good. Oh my God, think how heavy that bike is with all the kit on it. Oh, I love Raphael. What a guy. I'm, I'm a bit alone, you know. I have to, I, I try to reach a group. If I stay with those ones, it will take me 12 or 14 days to finish the race. But I'm, I'm physically not able to reach the others. It's impossible. My neck hurts a lot uh, since the hiking bike, because I had the bike five hours on my neck. I would like to use my aero bars, but I can't hold up my head to, wa to watch the, the road ahead, <laughs> which really sucks, so I, I, I get all the wind. And, w and when, when I did the hiking bike, I fell down as well with the bike. Yeah. Do you think you'll finish? Yesterday I would have said yes, today uh, I'm hoping it. Every day is challenging on a different part. Sometimes it's the heat, sometimes it's a strong headwind, sometimes it's just some pain I have on my, on my knees or something. Every day it's a different suffer. <laughs> Catch you tomorrow. Okay. You okay? Yeah. She does not look well. No. She's cycling very slowly and looks very. Her face looked, I don't know, very yeah. sunburned. We just passed Anna coming up a really steep hill and I think both of us kind of got a little bit anxious because she seemed really kind of like looked really shaky and looked really sunburned 
and just panicky and yeah. as a mate which I think we are now I'm kind of a bit worried, worried about her but you know I don't know what this is like whether this is normal and uh, I thought it would be a good idea just for one of us to go and speak to her It's as if she wants the win now. It's like it's more important. But I worry her physically, she's fragile. Why? I just feel that's a dangerous combination. I was victim of hit and run and was told I'd never walk again. You can come back from anything. I've got, see that there where the arm was ripped off? That's, that's another hit and run. I'll decide when I quit, nobody else. And I would imagine it'll be the same for Anna. She seemed to suggest that this wasn't normal and not going the way she wants it to and it's a lot harder than she thought it was going to be. She's not cycling. She's just coasting. She did a 24 hour race 10 days ago, so she's not going to be ready. She was not, she was in a hospital a year ago, <laughs> unable to walk. My strengths and my weakness is that I'm stubborn. Too stubborn and too rigid with myself. It's either everything or nothing, and that is good, but it's also probably a hindering. And the other thing is I just probably don't quite know where to stop. I do got the intuition where I have to stop, but I can, if I want to, I can override it. <laughs> I don't give a shit about it, okay? I really don't give a fucking shit. They put the camera down. I don't give a fucking shit about it. Look, we're gonna crack on and give you some space. Hi, Rufus and Steve. Um, thanks for being concerned. Even though it might look all very crazy, it's under control and I know what I'm doing. It's just frustrating that I can't perform and I used to be able to perform with half the effort. And I know my body is falling apart and I can't do anything for it. Do you find it weird that you refer to your body and yourself in the third person a lot? No. I mean, if, if you would be me or if you would be in my body, you would realise that the feet and the legs on another person. My body is not the same as before and it wasn't quite ready for it. I'm not a superhero and I can't produce fairy tale finishes. I'm just an average person. We got a call from Anna and she said she's pulling out of the race. She's scratching. If I finish here, for what do I finish? What am I doing to myself if I continue that? If I continue this, I'm going to destroy something that I just worked one year to get back up. You know, you can see I fight so hard. And I have to, do, do you hold, I am right now, I have to fight 23 hours every day. I give myself one hour of sleep. I've got the entire field ahead of me, all of them. And I won't catch anyone because I can't do it. Even if I'm really good, you know, even if my body isn't the good it could be right now, I wouldn't have the power to get anywhere. Can you get up? Maybe. Or stand on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Hold on, I'm a bit worried now, Wendy. How that works. I never quit before. And then two days ago when I realized how bad of a state I am actually in comparison to what I used to be, I didn't quite 100% think of quitting. I, I thought, okay, I accept now that I'm gonna do it in the state that I am and not that I used to be. Or should I finish it? Finish it? Yeah. 
paint. Oh, shut up. So just finish it. Are you finished? Yeah? Okay, no going back on that now. Thank you. How's that on it? It's better. If you're logical, rational, you, you don't do ultra events. So why do you do this? For me, it's uh, the pleasure of having the outlet for my stubbornness and my, my psychological makeup. I've always been either 100% and everything in or nothing. I did risk a lot for this and that's part of the stubbornness. I, I don't like to compromise. I'm a lone wolf. I think apart from Ruby, there isn't anyone that is sort of a, a permanent close part of my life. It's the 10th day of the race, 11th day, 11th I think, it's Thursday, must be, because I want to finish on Friday, tomorrow, I want to finish. And how are you feeling? Mm, better this morning, if, if you would have met me yesterday night, I was really, really mentally and physically destroyed. Um, I didn't have a rain jacket. This is second hand shop, a thrift shop. It's the Spanish Red Cross. It's a paramedic jacket. How, 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 how big is the ironic thing? I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna finish in a paramedic jacket. Is this worth it? Depends how cold the beer is at the finish. <laughs> Last time I saw you, I told you guys that my neck hurt. It's a very aerodynamic neck brace. And through this, my uh, head can't fall down. So now when I'm cycling, at least my I can look on the downhill part, I can look more or less ahead. I can already see Bilbao pretty much. Uh, it's 360k to go. You're good guys, thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you. We'll drink beer one day. Would be wonderful. Michelle. All right. Stay safe, man. Bye bye. I don't feel quite right having the finish. I don't feel that I quite deserve the finish. The only reason why I would have finished that is to stroke my broken ego from last year. That's a fairly low reason. Got attacked by a donkey. <laughs> For me, it would have been worse actually going through the finish line, everyone thinking it's great that I finished and me just feeling that it's awful how I finished. If I wouldn't have stopped then, I would be out there right now really unhappy that I'm not here. Really, really unhappy. You seem to meet the right people at the right time. I actually, one of the reasons I scratched was also I saw a little girl and she looked at me, but the way she looked at me, she couldn't keep her eyes off my nose and off the state of me. And I could really feel that her concern, you know? And that was just Jenny. She was actually, she looked at me, not in any nasty way, but she just looked at me and as to say, this is really bad. This is like 
seriously bad. This is I've never seen anything like this before. It was a bit of fascination, but I could see she was scared for me. I mean, there's moments like this, you know, you, you meet people that you will never see again, never, and they give you so much. It's been a, a mad year. It's not finished yet, Rufus. What's not? It's not finished. What isn't? Well, it's not finished, the best is yet to come. The thing is, you know, I'm like a snow leopard in Walter Mitty. <laughs> I just peek out. <laughs> when the camera is switched off. The moment you turn off the camera, I'm gonna get into my car and get, up, get down to Santiago and ride the last bit back to Bilbao. <laughs> I actually was thinking about this today. I was thinking about doing that, you know, and I thought I'd be fucking stupid. It's not worth it, you know, because oh, it's four days of riding and the weather's turning now. I stay here and eat some bacon sandwiches and drink Coke. <laughs> things are up here.